Okay, now we come to another point of these teachings, how we're cleaning up the mess, or how we're going ahead and cleaning up uh, different processes. What I'd like to tell you, or take you back, is to, if you remember, a couple of years ago, we got involved, or about over a year plus, with E. coli and E. coli. A couple of years ago, when we gave the technology, the knowledge, we thought the scientists in South Carolina University, to build a system and then use the material of the CO2 on uh, E. coli, which was killing thousands of people, so according to the World Health Organization. When they took the system to the capital and they took it to be shown to, uh, and that day of presentation in the presidential palace, happened to be someone from MIT, which we saw later on, MIT used the knowledge to confirm the correctness in so many different ways, but the name of MIT, then the equipment from the scientists in South Carolina University was confiscated. And they were told they cannot carry on with the test, because they showed the correctness of total eradication of Ebola. Then what they did, the scientists went back to the university, and with arrangement with the other scientists and support teams, they built the second unit and they tried it on E. coli. And they cultured it, and after 24 hours, there was no E. coli. So, we had an idea that the systems can be used for virus and bacteria in different ways. Then, I'll bring you back to further time. When we started the teaching two years ago, or two years ago, in Cash Foundation, about the May of two years ago, we had a lady with us called Yukoka. Yukoka took the technology, what we saw, the sponge brushes that we just seen for air pollution in the car, and GANS materials, and she flew to Japan, because that was her home. She was concerned about the contamination from Fukushima. We published papers, she spent three days, most of us stayed live while she was testing. We guided her, these are the pictures I asked, that is available, you can see it. This is live from Fukushima. A lot of you saw this, and this is her beautiful face, what she did. A lot of people may complain about it, but what happened in the background, this video, raised a lot of question for the Japanese government. How come this lady has come, and how effectively she shows it? Then, they knew there is a solution. And then, we saw a process, which a lot of you are aware of, and a new dimension has come out of this. A lot of you, a few months ago, saw a man, you heard a man, who was, after Yukoko did this Fukushima experiment, brought to the attention of the TEPCO, that there could be a solution. So TEPCO, as I am an Iranian nuclear physicist, could not approach us, set up a decoy. And that decoy is on the table now. He was going to explain to you, himself, what has happened, and a lot of you, by the end of this session, will ask for one thing, which is what happened through my head when I saw it. I asked for the resignation of the Japanese Prime Minister, because he's betrayed his nation. We go through it, and let's see if you are correct, because a lot of you who live in America, a lot of you who live in Central Europe, a lot of you who have the possibility of being contaminated by the radioactive material. A lot of you who go to the hospitals and you are given radioactive material injection, or radiation injection, for different medical purposes, you do not know what's going to happen to you with the radiation in your body, how much of it comes out and what it does. We have a solution. Listen to it. Can I ask, uh, Rick, if you can promote the Blue Cross, please, that he can present his 
Can you see him online? Okay. Um, if you can stop the pictures from your Coco, please, and allow uh, him to share his screen. Mr. Khan, welcome to the Cash Foundation. It's the second time we see you in the past month. You showed us the use of the machine for measuring Magraph system in Japan. Mr. Khan Sonel is the Cash Foundation Japan. He is head and partner in the Cash Foundation Japan. And he's one of the most trusted people Japanese could ever trust even though he's Turkish by origin. He lives in Japan, he's a, he's a, a fluent Japanese speaking, and his company was set up to be the intermediary between TEPCO and Cash Foundation. And I leave it to him to explain how he came to us and how the process started. Are you there, Mr. Kansol? While he's trying to do, I'll tell you what TEPCO has done for this man who helped Japan so much. They have sacked him, they put him on the street, and they have made sure he cannot have a job in, China, in Japan. They are making sure that this man has not the bread to eat and feed his children, and the Cash Foundation is there to support. He is part of the Cash Foundation in Japan, and you will be amazed what is going to be described, what is going to be described now. Go ahead, please, Mr. Kanda. The floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, please, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my name please, is... Please, if you're Japanese, make a record of this and put it on the internet in Japan. Section cut this and promote it across the world because it's going to touch all of you. Oh, when we said today we're going to release information, this part, this is what we are talking about. Learn what it is, the data which is going to be submitted and the information is going to be submitted and then we'll see where we go and then we'll discuss afterwards. You can ask directly questions from uh, uh, Mr. Khan and then he'll go with it. Please start, I'll go silent. Yes, sir. Um, uh, as I said, my name is Jan Sunar and uh, I'm a Turkish by origin but I've grown up in Japan. Um, I have a degree in chemical engineer and a master's degree in business administration. And I have been working for a major Japanese trading company. And one of my duties was supplying for TEPCO and regarding this cleanup. Your job was, can you repeat what was your job? My job, one of my job was supplying uh, stuff. That means like all kinds of goods to be used by TEPCO. We are the, before my company was the preferred partner for TEPCO for supplying, let's say, the cables, pipes, and all sorts of stuff. So in Japan, there's a tradition that this is, uh, the companies, they don't buy directly, especially the government companies, they don't buy from suppliers. They don't simply want to deal with it. And there are trading companies in between who supplies them. So when it comes to TEPCO, and we were one of the major suppliers for TEPCO, with the cables, with the pipes, let's say, all sorts of stuff, including iron exchange resin. So, um, and I was the uh, responsible person who is dealing between suppliers and the TEPCO. And one of the uh, material we were used to supply was the iron exchange resin, which is used to filter the water in Fukushima. And uh, we used to use a company's product. Uh, I'm not gonna give the names, the details, because I already have a lot of problem in Japan because doing this. And as Mr. Kesh said, I already labeled for my job, and it is it seems impossible for me to find a new job in Japan because of my name at the moment. So, and yes, so I'm I'm not gonna give into too much in detail unless you ask. So, and we, I was gonna, I I used to supply a from a company in US, 
it's a known company in the iron nuclear iron exchange resin and other resins and the, the, it is pricey and it had a problem with the calcium and uh, the, the the water in fukushima is pretty much uh, calcinated and it makes it impossible for the regular iron exchange resin to be used so i was in the search for a different material to supply TEPCO, which they asked. And after my search on the internet, I come across with Mr. Ketch's cans, CO2 and other uh, types of cans, like copper cans and uh, carbon dioxide cans. So and I wanted to give a chance, give a try, if that really works. So that's how I approached Mr. Cash on more than almost two years ago, in between 2013. And so I, at that time, he was in um, Italy, in a different part of Italy, and he was kind to accept me, and we talked, and after that he gave me, and he sent me some samples. And those samples were give, was given to TEPCO in order to test it. So, and um, mm, the problem was the TEPCO wanted to keep themselves out of this loop, not to look like that they're, they're using because they are using Mr. Cash's technology. And at the meeting of after the test at the meeting, I, I remember that the person who is responsible for this cleanup, he said, we don't actually want to use Mr. Cash's, we don't like to use Mr. Cash's technology, but we have to use it. So this was the, their mindset, this was their approach. So they don't really want to deal with it, but they have to deal with it because they have no other choice to push like. Okay, so um, the samples were given to TEPCO and TEPCO did various tests on them and they asked more sample and Mr. K sent more sample and I gave more sample and also the, at that time it was an issue with the strontium and tritium mainly. So uh, tritium, with the tritium, uh, Mr. K also sent them another kind of a device or a setup in order to be used with the CO2 GANs. And this was also supplied and this was also tested. And then everything went well and uh, there is actually like various groups in one group, the, which they call it uh, cleaning up the water in the tanks. And then so they can pump into back to sea so simply there is no way to store them on the side or nearby because every day, almost like depending on the day, almost like 200 or 300 tons of water, highly contaminated water is pumped in and pumped out from the reactors and cannot be pumped into sea and cannot be stored easily it's out of water every day. So, and the, the, I think the test all went well, as well as I was informed, but uh, there was such a strict uh, procedures, including a big NDA, non-disclosure agreement. Most of them probably who's in the business know what is NDA. And uh, we cannot really, uh, at that time, still we cannot really expose that we are giving the suppliers because it, it is a strict rule that we cannot tell to our supplier that we are applying to Fukushima. It, it concerns Mr. K, it concerns the other companies. So if it's a government procedure, if it's a government security, it's a government related job. So as a trading company, we are buying, but we are not telling the buyer that we are supplying to TEPCO, we are giving to TEPCO. If TEPCO has a problem with the part or with the material, TEPCO uh, giving the claim to us and we give claim to the supplier without telling who's using it. So this is what the trading company does actually in Japan. 
So, and yes, uh, under strict NDA conditions, we were told that the, the test all went well, and there was two gentlemen who were supposed to visit the cash in Italy, and it was off schedule. And then, at the last moment, something happened. So, um, we got a big problem. Somehow, uh, we were told that um, I, myself, told Mr. Cash that I'm supplying the stuff to TEPCO. So, it wasn't supposed to be told to Mr. Cash officially, so, and then this was the problem. You got to realize, uh, let me give you a piece of information. You got to realize, when you have a man who comes from Japan, and we send directly shipment into Tokyo, and we are directly speaking about nuclear contamination, it can't be any about, uh, about TEPCO. So, it was, as we are so intelligent, we understand the nuclear technology, it was obvious that Mr. Khan was a supplier into TEPCO. You don't need to put two, it doesn't take much of an intelligence to put two and two together. And this is what TEPCO could not understand. They assume that everybody is stupid. And that's where the problem came. It wasn't that it was disclosed to us, but it was that we knew, because it was obvious, there's only one nuclear accident, one people who have a radiation problem, and how come we are literally sending if you remember, Mr. Khan, we were sending the CO2 as talcum powder solution in one of the DHL, the Americans allowed it to be shipped out, if you remember. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Because the Americans were controlling in what we were sending out, a lot of it went through Los Angeles out to Toco, if I'm correct. Yes, sir. And in a couple of instances, especially when we came to Stratonym, we shipped directly into Japan for TEPCO. We have all the DHL papers. We have all the Federal Express papers, what we have shipped, where we have shipped. So carry on, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, there were various issues with shipment, but somehow it worked. And the samples arrived to Japan and was delivered to TEPCO. And yes, the, the, at the last moment, something from the upper level from the TEPCO of my company had a big claim that we were on the breach of NDA, which means we broke the NDA regulation, uh, the, the rules, and we have a big problem, all sorts of stuff. And then uh, they canceled their trip to Mr. Cash, and then in three weeks, there we had a meeting with my, my boss, also my boss's boss, means the owner of a company, and this person has almost like 7,000 workers in Japan, and he has 60 companies extra. He's such a high-level person. Uh, he had a meeting with TEPCO, and the outcome of the meeting that, yes, my company, which he owns, means one of the 60 companies he owns, he, we broke the rules. And it was obvious that we did. And somebody has to pay for it. So, and then I was the black sheep at that time who has to pay for it, and I had to resign. And then after two months, my boss had to resign as well. Uh, he was 64 at that time, he was close to uh, retirement, he didn't mind resigning that much also, but it wasn't a good thing anyway. His life is okay, although my life got crippled like this at my young age. So, the problem is after everything happened and I sat down and thought about it, what has happened, it looks like I, I, I remember the, what the guy said, the director at that time, we don't want to deal with Mr. Cash, but we have to deal with Mr. Cash. So, and it looks like the, his technology is pretty much open. Very much open, and you can even make a GANS in a simple method. So 
So you don't really need Mr. Keshe anymore. You don't really need his name. So and as a Japanese, especially dealing with a person who is really critical of the United States, which the US government, which I'm going to show you now, is very much involved with the cleaning up of Fukushima. And so they don't want to deal with the Iranian person who is a critic of US and providing the biggest solution, most wanted solution to Fukushima, which nobody could at that point. So they wanted to cut him off. And they found some gap that we broke the NDA. And this was the reason. And then I got scrapped up from the company and all. And they are all clean. And I am the one who is in fault. Although they kind of stole the information from us and used for themselves. So that, that was the situation. And then now, th these are all passed and gone. And so they didn't promote Mr. Cash as the, so as the um, let's say, the, the person who really helped the Fukushima cleanup. And right now, the Fukushima cleanup is more or less, I'm going to show you now, the, they can pump the water into the sea starting from 2015. And it looks like they have no issue with the water. And so uh, Mr. Cash actually is the person, and his technology is, the technology is being used by TEPCO at this point, but he's not credited for this due to, I think, like, High level political issues. So um, let me. Can you can you all see my screen? Yes, we see the clean up of Fukushima on cash. The, this is the um, this is the beginning, the cover of the presentation. I made a simple one, and so yeah. Yeah, this was this this for 2012 um, a big wave hit to the reactor there and the reactor ex exploded and this is a pretty much known picture that everybody knows so and this was the situation in uh, 2011 okay they had four reactors there it is one two three and four Okay, the, um, the fourth reactor it didn't contain any reactor itself but it was stored the uh, the excess uh, excess fuel from the reactor number one, two, and three. Okay, and this is the this is the sea side, and this is how the waves hit from sea to the reactor. And at that time, after this big wave, this is what the situation is. So in the reactor one, as it says, the Uranium is partly melted, so and this is the reactor. And those are the water storage tanks. Those, those tanks are used to get the water from the sea, supply to the reactor, they clean up the water, and they uh, um, cool down the reactor, and they have a, in, this, this is a facility which cleans up the water itself, the little bit contaminated water under conventional uh, means. Which, which is not highly contaminated, and pump it back to the sea. It's a pretty much common uh, uh, thing to do in the nuclear reactors. They cool down the nuclear reactors with the seawater and pump it back. And this, this is the second reactor. Oh, and the, the, there's a span fluid inside, but this was not uh, the main issue, and the main issue was the third reactor, and it was fully, not partly like number one, it was fully destroyed, and uh, there was a meltdown, and all of the, around this area, especially here, number three and number four, was not accessible to human by any means, in order to go inside and figure out what had happened. Okay, uh, this is the situation. 
Yeah, this is the situation right now, number 2015, and this is the reactor number one, reactor number two, number three, and this is the reactor number four that they used to uh, store the uh, excess radioactive material. So uh, those, and uh, this is uh, where they get into, from here, the uh, pipelines, going under this building and from this building this is connected to the reactor and cooling down the water and the water got, comes back into this building and uh, various filters and then it's filtered to the radioactive condemnation and pumped back. This used to be like that. Right now it, it was in a really bad condition and as you can see and this is published from the Asai newspaper in Japan uh, Normally, you cannot get a shot like this uh, detail from the side because it's so prohibited. So uh, it looks like it's pretty much, again, covered, and you can see all the cars are parked and human people are walking, which is actually impossible under conventional talk. You can see the, you can think about the Chernobyl uh, in Russia, and it was still not possible even to come nearby to that nuclear site after the explosion. And here it was highly contaminated four years ago. As you can see, those are the sites that is food. It means like the food is all like uh, all, all around the site, not inside the reactor only. And now you can see and uh, also, if you can find various pictures on the internet, people are walking. And there is a kind of a joke, and some people even wanted to make uh, uh, some kind of a guided tour for tourists. They, they call it black tourism, in order to, for the regular people to visit the Fukushima site. So it is that much safe at the moment. But what, what kind of a technology? do they have and they can clean up that nuclear site which, which was heavily polluted in less than four years and until 2013 they couldn't do anything and 2013 nothing could be done even the robots they went into the nuclear site got dried up with the radiation even the robot couldn't work not even the human and then after 2005, after 2005, 2006, 2014, something has happened. Something has happened and... You mean 2013-14? 2014, actually, the person who I was dealing with, the head of the director, died from the cancer. And then things has changed, and 2014, yes, I start supplying your material. So... Can you repeat that, please? Okay, two, 2014, the director of Fukushima cleanup has died from cancer. Of too much radiation? Uh, yes, but they don't say that. They say he was a heavy smoker. And that's why he died out of cancer. This is what the uh, official explanation is. So you can find information all over the web regarding him. So yes, he died. And after he died, he was a very secure guy. Uh, he, he, was a, he belonged to a tradition where the old Japanese belonged to. And he didn't really try anything out of the Japan. So they were trying to do it within the Japan, within the Japanese uh, technology, not too much getting out of help from the outside. So they wanted to keep it very secret, what they're doing. The situation was really bad. The situation is really bad. Tokyo is almost like 250 kilometers far, and especially the reactor 4 is full of nuclear rods and it can explode and so if that exploded luckily it didn't happen not even tokyo the the the, the north of the japan including tokyo all the way to osaka would be contaminated 
and nobody could even like get in it was such a big situation and that and even that was not told to the public and people in Tokyo 250 kilometers away were living a regular life without knowing the reactor number four can explode anytime and they can even die right away so it was such a bad condition but the government including the guy who passed out was keeping it very secret and they didn't want to deal with anybody and anything out of this island and everything is kept secret it, it, after that guy passed out things had changed a new person came and it was obvious that none of the solution a Japanese or a Japanese company or a Japanese uh, institution can provide works. So at that time they tried different alternatives including Mr. Cash's technology. So in 2015 you can see people are walking, the cars are inside the nuclear reactor and this is the situation. And what how this happened and this is this is the thing how did this happen in like less than two years so this is was the this thing. the process when they were given the co2 the production of the guns yeah the production of the gases can be done pretty much on their own but they were shown is effective yes and as far as I know, and I'm the one, I'm the major company who's supplying the... Original samples. The SEPCO, what? Say again, please. The original samples of the GANs from us. Yeah, the original, the thing is, uh, the thing is, I think how it worked, they got the samples, they tried it out, they saw that it works, and then they cut us off. So because it was a big thing and... It because we are teaching it on the internet, so they knew what to do. Yes. It was a matter of getting it to work. Yes, so they just wanted to have a real product. Not because in order to... You, you want to try a new technology, right? And you want to get the sample from the in, inventor himself. So you want that real sample. You, you can do make you, it... At do you have a picture of you in uh, Fukushima? Yeah, I send it to you, I guess. Can you send it? Can you put it on? I Do don't have it on this computer. You don't have that computer. Um, I don't have access to my computer. We'll release the pictures of Mr. Sun at uh, Fukushima, at the gates of Fukushima, when he was delivering the material to the site and there are videos of us live testing things with the Fukushima officials just a week before they fly into Italy, before they were stopped to do so. Carry on, please. Yes. Um, yeah. And so, what I believe what has happened, they got the samples, they tried them out, and they had a problem with the tritium, they couldn't figure that out, how that works, and Mr. Cash provided uh, some kind of simple solution to that too to be used with the GANs and then they tried that too and that worked as well and then uh, from the the, the the people who who did the test was okay they had no problem with dealing with Mr. Cash on their side and but, but the thing is the upper management probably who stopped this and uh, this is what has happened and they cut Mr. Cash off and stopped coming to Italy and they cut my company in, and then they gave another reason that we did the NDA breach and then they cut me off and my boss then off to so the, the thing is they are producing the gas itself I think and they're using it widely uh, in order to clean up human but so the gas liquid is used for decontamination across Fukushima. Yes. So the gas is used in Fukushima, and I'm gonna right now show you how it is being used. Okay. So uh, I I made a small chart that 
what's going on in the, in the, in the Fukushima nuclear site from the uh, contaminated water, you can find the major contaminants like iodine, beryllium, cesium, strontium, and plutonium. And iodine is pretty much easy. The technology has been, has been there almost like 60 years, clean up of iodine from the uh, contaminated water. But tellurium is pretty much difficult. Cesium is difficult. Strontium-90 is almost impossible. It's highly difficult. This is what the, actually the TEPCO was really got stagnant with. And the level of tritium, which I didn't write it here, because the tritium, that it doesn't have a half-life that long. It can be stored, and after, let's say, 12 years, the, all the uh, radiation is almost gone, and you can pump into the, into the sea. But the problem is, how can you store two to, let, let's say, the minimum 200 pounds of highly contaminated water on the site for 12 years? It makes no sense. It makes a huge amount of set up which is impossible there's no place to set up to store that much of water so okay so since 2011 that site is producing 200 to 300 tons of iron contaminated water from the reactors mostly number three and number one and then 2015 tepco started releasing 850 tons of low radioactive the water into the ocean daily. So, and under conventional technology, normal, normally you can filter a few hundred liters of highly contaminated water, not even tons. This is pretty much expensive and hard. So, and then the question is, it says, does TEPCO unlawfully we are telling the international community releasing the highly contaminated water into the ocean, which is not impossible because uh, if you release the highly contaminated water in Pacific from Japan, you can measure it in US or you can on the other side of the ocean, or you can measure it pretty much easily that uh, highly contaminated water is being dumped. So they cannot do that. So they have a, some kind of efficient technology in TEPCO, which is not being released, if it is being released, it would be on the internet and some scientists would publish papers, at least, or getting the claim on We that. have already published the papers, they know what it is. Yes. This is the strange thing about it, they already, we already released the knowledge. Yes, so, and they, they have something that they are using but it is not clear that they don't admit that they are using. So, but they wasn't there before we send them the solution for a stratonum, because immediately within a month, they announced they have cleaned up all the stratonum. Yes. Uh, yes, stratonum was, strontium was a big issue, and they had no solution for strontium. So, and after you send them the samples, all of a sudden, they have a magic solution for the strontium, and then they start releasing water into the ocean. So this is a strange thing. Okay, anyway, this is how the ion exchange as works. Here, and the ion exchange as means, uh, it's kind of a filter. It is a two or three, uh, hold on a second. It's a two or three steps of uh, filtering, and which is uh, the uh, some sorts of filter material are being used. It is similar to what uh, most of the people are using at their home. It is like consists of uh, some, let's say, clay or other ion exchange resin, all in like in the layers, they, they filter the water and the highly contaminated radioactive particles are trapped into the ion exchange resin 
and then the work is cleaned in that way. It's pretty much the logic is simple, but the, the exchange is in the field that they use itself, which can absorb, which, which can absorb the radioactive material on themselves, is a pretty much difficult technology. So, yes. Okay, so this is what it comes in. And there's a company called Curion. And Curion is an American company. And Curion is a, was a, such a small company, it's a startup company located in, I visited them a few times. And uh, they had a location, they still have a, lo they have a location in Hawaii, Los Angeles, and they had the actual testing center in Seattle uh, in America. So, and yes, I have the business card of all the people I talk to, I can show you. And yes, this was such a small company. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, this small company became the key supplier for the uh, key, not, not even the it became the key company who was chosen by the Japanese government in order to clean up the Fukushima, the, the water, the highly contaminated water. And it's such a small company, why this company is granted from the Japanese government, it is very unlikely. First of all, it is a US company, and it's a small company, it's a startup company, and they have no technology, no nothing in their hand which they can promote themselves as the major cleaning up company of Fukushima, which is almost seems really difficult. Besides, let me explain, <coughs> let me explain to you. or Toshiba or other companies were not branded. Let me explain to you, let me explain something for those who don't know. Fukushima plant was sold by the American companies to Mitsubishi and Toshiba that they have nothing to do with the, with the uh, tip, with what you call Fukushima plant. And in exchange, part of the contract is that this company was set up as a backdoor to be able to cash what the money was from the Cash Foundation technology. You've got to understand that according to the Second World War agreement, Japanese cannot do anything nuclear. They cannot even buy a gram of uranium without the American government having a say in it. So the plant was owned officially by, by Westinghouse and the others, sold to get rid of, but still had to have a line of earning for the American government. So this company was set up, which means they have a stronghold on the Japanese nation, totally in the nuclear industry. And without this company signing the certification of cleanup, IAEA will not allow the reactors to come into operation. In a way, this company is a backdoor to fraud, high-level fraud, international fraud, in a way that the Americans keep control of the Japan nuclear industry, energy industry, and in that process, that they get paid for it. So, now that the technology was delivered to Japan, and Westinghouse has handed over everything to, uh, what do you call it, to the Japanese, which is a normal transaction, then this company had to be set up to be able to guarantee income into the United States from the investment of technology and control. Um, this is part of the same with German. German government, according to Second World War, cannot handle nuclear materials, in case they use it in a different way. So what they do, they go outside, invest in their name in nuclear industry, but under the cover of the German uh, government. We've seen this with the, what do you call it? Uh, we've seen this with the, uh, a new, medical reactor in Belgium, in uh, 
uh, in the, what do you call it, in the nuclear area. So, these kind of technologies are uh, the back feeders of the new technologies to control uh, the decontamination. But, in fact, it's an income to guarantee the control that it cannot be out of the hand of what I call United Nation. Carry on, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is the, uh, the all the photos I'm showing you right now is, you can pretty much find them over the internet. So, nothing secret. Uh, this, this, this is the Curion's mobile processing unit, which they have all the iron exchange resin inside. Water is pumped in and pumped out, and the water is clean. And this is unlikely for a very small company. This kind of technology is very, very unlikely to have, and under normal condition, you can maybe, maybe clean up few hundred liters of water with a with a system as big as I'm gonna show you here as big as this building. This building. It fits into this building. You cannot the do this whole thing is cleaning up everything in Fukushima in a way. Yes. And this thing is a small container and clean up everything in Fukushima. Uh, where this technology came from all of a sudden. Okay and and this is Another picture, and here... Who, who I took these pictures? Those pictures are taken by uh, Curion. Ah, oh, okay. So, pictures, I got it this, as much as I was allowed. Let me ask, please, webmasters and recorders, please record everything that, if there is any attack on us to bring the website and teachings down, it can go on the internet in different ways. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, system when it is working. So this yes. is working. Okay, and those are the uh, iron exchanges and material they use, and for various this this is all like set up in the piping system. Those pipes are filled up with these materials, and the water runs through the pipes. And they get clean, and uh, as you can see, this white material is very, very familiar to you, I guess. This so, is uh, CO2. Yes. This is the gans of CO2. So, uh, this is the last step, actually the actual step which cleans up the water. So all the other, this one, two, three, four, and five is being used for the purification of water itself. Just the water and yeah, and then for the because in the water there's also not only radioactive materials and they have the other contaminants like the heavy metals, let's say arsenic or the other isotopes which cannot be actually used by cleaned up by the CO2 gas. They really they had to have some conventional uh, uh, filtering materials, like as you can see here, the fifth, five of them is are well known ion exchange resin, because I'm in this business, I know what to what, so and those ion exchange resins are not for radioactivity, they are for heavy, met heavy metals. Those are for chlorine isotopes, those are for, uh, one of them is for chlorine, radioactive chlorine isotopes, one of them is for radioactive arsenic isotopes. And this is, this doesn't belong to here. So, and so this is what is actually being used in this in order to clean up the radioactivity. So, yeah. And, uh, okay. Hold on a second, yeah. So, um, yes, this is pretty much what's going on with the Fukushima, uh, but Although Mr. Keshe didn't get any credit on himself uh, officially, but the cleanup is there and it's working pretty well. And so, and I'm living in Japan. I have two kids, my, and two small kids I have, and I'm happy on my side that I can safely live 
in this country, I can continue to live in this country. But on the other side, I kind of feel sad that Mr. Cash didn't get any didn't get any like uh, official credit. That's that's not important. The credit is all of us. We are safer. There is a matter of medical application. Can you go into that, please? Okay. Um, okay. One of the material when I when I uh, supplied the CO2 gens and the copper gens to TEPCO, uh, normally I, I said this is something that this is CO2 and they said what is CO2? CO2 is gas or CO2 is dry ice? What is CO2? We don't know such a CO2 and we cannot try this material that we don't know, you, you should give us the MSDS. MSDS means material safety sheet, which when, as a chemical trading company, when you supply a new material, you give the customer, first of all, it's a must have the material safety sheet, which gives the other physical properties, also the toxicity of the material. So in this case, uh, Mr. Cash case, we had no MSDS. Because this is not a known material and this has no cast number. This has no MSDS because it is not a conventional known material, it's a new material. And so at that time I, I couldn't provide MSDS. And the situation was the temp cause reaction was <laughs> is it a joke? If it is if you cannot give us the MSDS, we cannot use it. It is highly unlikely that we can accept such an unknown material. And then, but uh, things that happened, and the, the directors have changed and all, and then they said, okay, we, we give a try. But before giving a try, we need to at least make a um, test with the toxicity. We don't know our workers, we, if, if this works, our workers are gonna handle this material, and it looks like it's a powder in the water, it's with a suspension, and they'll be dealing with it, so we like to do the toxicity test before we start doing any further test. Is it okay with you? I say, yeah, sure, it's okay. And they did some test for the toxicity of it, okay, before start using it. And then this is the test was done and I was shown the result of the test, although I wasn't supposed to publish it and they didn't publish it. I think at that time it was a mess. Nobody thinks or cares they were publishing any paper on the, what's going on in Fukushima. They just want to survive. So, and this is the, and they want to keep it pretty short, the testing of this material, because they are testing not only the cash material, they are testing more than 100 of iron exchange resin. Most of them are supplied in order to, use, in order to be used in Fukushima. So, and this, this method was tested pretty much fast, and this is how they did the testing. Okay, so there was three groups of rotten mice, and uh, this is pretty much known for the uh, people who is into laboratory testing, this, this kind of setup. So every group had six mice, and there were six groups. And uh, the, the mice, except the except the group number three, you know, all the mice was giving 100 micro, micro not, not milli, micrograms per kilo uh, every day, daily, and this was CO2 gans, and CO2 gans was the uh, powder in the water was mixed with their daily diet, daily laboratory uh, rotten diet, the mice food diet. Okay, so um, it, it means that uh, for this, the, the rotans looks like they uh, look like they, they weigh between 150 grams to 200 grams. So per mice, uh, 20 microgram of CO2 gas was given uh, daily in their food. So um, uh, as you can see, there are six groups, and the first group 
that is given only the tank water, radiation contaminated water only, this group. And the second group was fed, and this, the radiation contaminated water means they place the water, the, the, the mice needs to the water. The water was uh, radiation contaminated water. Also, they put the, uh, the, um, the food, the laboratory food for the mice they fed is in pellets. So, and they used to put the uh, highly contaminated tank water on, they, they put onto the pellets and make it absorb so they make sure that the mice eat the consciously highly contaminated water. Besides, there is a water cap, that, that, that is a water cup in the um, in the setup, so if the mice wants to drink water, he can go and drink from the water. But it looks like the mice didn't touch to the water because I don't know because they if they felt it was highly radiated, contaminated or not. Anyhow, so the water looked intact, but also they mixed the highly contaminated water with the food and fed the mice. Okay, the group was only radiation contaminated water, and the second group was so the mice are fed. The, the first group you say at the bottom, which uh, given contaminated water, all died within their first week. Yes, I think it, they, they died, if I'm not mistaken, it, 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 it had been more than a year. It had been almost three days, all the mice, in, in three days, two or three days, most of the mice are died. There was only one left, and that one is survived for almost a week. And the end, at the end of the last week, mice also died. So it's not actually the all mice died, it, it, they all died much earlier, but the, the last one survived the week, so that's why we the week. That's the week. And the second group, was a given contaminated water was like uh, sprinkled, put it onto the food, and also the CO2 gas was put onto the food as well, it was all mixed. The, the water liquid can CO2, yes? Yes, liquid can CO2. Right. And all the ones in that group survived? All, the, all, all that group has survived, okay. And uh, the, actually, the third group, I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. This is one, two, and this is the third group. Third group, actually, this was supposed to be done, actually, and the third group was only CO2 gains, and it was given five milligrams per kilo, and they wanted to check this is what they, this is the actual reason why they started. This was supposed to be the actual reason why they started doing this test, as they told me, the toxicity of the material. And this is the toxicity, and they gave five milligram, not 100 microgram, five milligram per kilo, and they tested on the six mice, and they tried to figure out if there's any toxicity on the mice, if the mice is dying or something, or any other adverse, adverse effects. Nothing is observed. And yes, and then this is the sixth group, is the control group, which was giving nothing, it's a control group, so everybody knows. So, so in fact, uh, the CO2 gas is not toxic material at all? Not at all, even the... This is, this is these two major points, we come back to this later on. So, what we understand, we can use gas of CO2 in condition of the radiation contamination for waters. You can add CO2 into the water when you're in a nuclear disaster condition, and that water which you drink from the GANS can decontaminate your body from radiation. Or you can, a minute amount of GANS has been digested by the animals, shows radiation contamination, none, and you'll survive. These are important, this is what we call this teaching of today, uh, important for a lot of us. Secondly, there's been a lot of concern about the toxicity of the CO2, if it's dangerous. Now we have it from TEPCO, it's not toxic at all. 
he'll explain to you later on how the test was done. Okay, go to group um, four, please. Okay, um, after that, there is another, there was another group, so, and this group consists of the mice, which was on purposely got sick, got, um, was given virus, influenza virus, and the fourth group was the um, influenza group, and this group was given CO2 GANS. This has nothing to do with the activity, and it was just for some reason, it was just given the infected mice and CO2. And group five was the infected mice plus, plus, uh, just just the infected mice, nothing. So with influenza, with, with influenza, yes. Okay. So group group five is survived. Uh, group five is survived, but there was no um, improvement with the infection. So, and the group four also survived, uh, but the infection has disappeared. So it looks like the CO2 again is somehow is working on. Somehow he's working on with the virus. Yes, because influenza is a virus, and that's what we said. This technology is best for a space. In a space, we don't have microbes. We have viruses, which are energy locked into proteins. And this is a clear indication. No influenza. No influenza at all. In the next few minutes, we bring back um, Benjamin from... Ghana. I have received a text, a shocking news coming from Ghana, which repeats the process in Sierra Leone, South Africa. Sorry, in uh, Sierra Leone, South uh, University. So, what we see now is that you can use influenza. Thousands, tens of thousands of people every year die because of influenza. Different shape. And this is a clear indication. No infection, no disease, no sign of influenza. Carry on, please. Okay. Um, after the test, I was called to TEPCO again. And, and the TEPCO, we got a meeting that the toxicity tests are okay. There's no toxicity happened. Uh, and they, they, they will start testing it. They ask for more material. And then I asked more material from Mr. K. Anyway, um, the, the, the thing is, uh, when I see these results, uh, and they said this is pretty much a common test which is done because they, they said this material, whatever you call CO2 gans or this white powder in the water, that time they didn't know it, um, is absorbing, it is the ion exchange as in, and the virus, the protein cover of the virus is consists of plus, like the um, the the capions and this and the what they try to filter out is mostly um, the anions. Ah uh, no, capions. So um, anions are different. Ion uh, exchange, I think they, they they can be pretty much easy. So they say if this works for virus, this works for the um, because the virus is absorbing onto these gans as far as they know, and they observe these viruses being absorbed onto GANS by the means of electrostatic force, which means that the GANS is acting like a, a negative. It's a magnet. Yes, and then the virus is, the, the, the virus is protein cover is plus, so it is absorbing it and uh, inactivating the virus. This is what they thought, this is what the working mechanism is. So they say this is pretty much the same working mechanism for cleaning up, the, for absorbing the condensated uh, water, for absorbing the isotopes from the condensated water. Let me let me add to the knowledge a little bit here. You got to realize why they changed, why they tested influenza. Most of the workers in TEPCO work in the sea level, cold winter, and they all get sick with influenza. That's why was to see if the CO2, if the workers in the radiation centers come in touch with CO2, 
would it affect, would it have a toxicity, and if they had the influenza, would it make them worse, because they are working in the huge uh, minus temperatures in North, in Japan in the winter time. So, this is why they tested it, it was to make sure that if CO2 comes with a touch with a man who's got the influenza, what would it do? What would it have? Would it have a side effect? And they found out, they found that even a solution for the influenza. This is why this was tested this way. I request one thing, and that is, if you are very clever and you understood what's on this table, you will understand what is to come after this. I let Mr. Khan finish, and then I'll give you a full explanation in what, how this will change the total lifestyle of us on this planet. And that's why I said today it'll be a revolution. Today is a green or blue print for a lot of things. Carry on, Mr. Khan. Okay, sir. Um can you tell us where, what did, what did they do? They did dissected the animals, what was the procedure? What did they do after the... The, the, the animals, uh, after they sacrificed the animals, and what was checked, uh, the, the liver. The liver was checked due to toxicity, and there was no toxicity that was observed on the group. You're cutting off. You're 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 not very clear. Okay, so uh, yes, the, the group they after the test they they cut the mice. They sacrificed the mice, and, they got the liver, and I think this is it, it, was, it was shown on the presentation, which was shown to me. They got the, they they took out the liver of the mice, and the group number third and the and the other groups, but especially number two, they were um, concerned with the toxicity because they were given five milligrams per kg. They got the mice, the liver, and they uh, chopped it off, they squeezed it, and then they uh, did uh, further chemical tests in order to uh, observe if there was any toxicity in the liver. And it was shown that the CO2, the CO2 was not in the uh, liver, so it, it means it wasn't in the liver. It's not toxic. It wasn't if it wasn't stored in the liver of the mice, it wasn't toxic because most of the poisonous contaminants are stored in the liver. So there was no sign of the CO2 in the liver, so they they concluded that this is not this is not uh, poisonous, and then. And they, they try to figure out the way how this is discarded from the body. So with the, within all the groups, uh, the, the, the urine of the mice was collected daily. So this is how they collect the, the, the cage, the cage which was the mice is kept. Uh, it is like, a, um, I mean, in, in a, um, some kind of mesh. The, 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 the mice is living on the mesh, and when they uh, give urine or the feces, the droppings of the urine goes under, and they collect the urine and the feces. So, and uh, they they check the, uh, the the urine of the group, and the CO2, uh, the CO2 was found in the urine also in the features, which is the dropping of mice, it was found in the mice. So all, all the uh, CO2 was, the mice ate, was discarded to the urine. So uh, uh, the problem is uh, the urine in the group number one was highly contaminated. And the group number two was also contaminated. So, and uh, that is the part they couldn't give an explanation. Okay, so the number one is contaminated. Number two is also contaminated. But this contamination seems not to have any effect on the mice itself, so, and the mice has survived. So this was the part they got puzzled, but they didn't put too much effort on it. They didn't care at that time, and I didn't care at that time too, and this is the way they do the test and they said okay i was happy that they want to try this new material all sorts of stuff is cleared out 
and then they decided going further. So I didn't really question at that time how they test, why they test, and they didn't question to themselves. So this was the result, and it wasn't toxic, then they start testing it. So this is what they said, but after uh, all things are done, and right now and they are using this material, and 